Happy Black History Month. In particular, I mean, yeah, we could spend all day talking about people who, who did what they did their job. They did what they were supposed to do. They got their reward. They've moved on to glory. And we're thankful for the things that they've done. But also, we cannot forget the people who are making Black History Month today. And I would like to thank, in particular, for this Black History Month, white men. In particular, white men who marry black women, which is a concept that I wasn't comfortable with at first, but over the years, I see how important it is. And also the sacrifice it makes and to deny them credit for what they've done is a disservice to humanity. You have to think about that for a minute. We'd like to, to poke fun at white men all the time, being top of the food chain, have no problems, everything's great for them. It's not, it's not always great to be a white male. It's not. Um, just walk down Central Avenue two o'clock in the morning and <laughs> you'll see that there is a significant difference. However, having said that, you have to think what happens, what they have to deal with every day when they have to face people who are not happy with their decision just because their spouse is not white. For that matter, being a gay white male and marrying a black gay male, there's a lot to unpack there. But to be a white male and to marry an African-American spouse takes a great deal of sacrifice and you have to give them credit for that. You can't take that away from them. I've learned to not take that away from them. That is a huge sacrifice and a high risk because this has not only been happening here lately, this has been happening since day one. There has been true love between black and white, male and female since day one. And Sometimes it's at the risk of their lives. Because if you think about it, what used to happen to white people when they fell in love with a black person? I mean, it's not as severe as what's happening today, but it used to be a matter of life and death. So to all the guys, my Caucasoid brothers and sisters, who decided to take that risk, Socially, personally, on both sides, because it's a risk on both sides. Because as a black community, we were quick to disown people who dated white people. Very quick to, back in the 70s, 80s, and up to the 90s. So it's not, a, it's not something that has gone away. Black people still disown black people who date white people and marry and have children. But if you think about it, it is a brave step for their love. If you think about it, it is the only way. I mean, you can have your BLM, your Black Lives Matter, your NAACP, your marches on Washington, campaign against racism. You could have all of that. But honestly, in the last 70 years, it hasn't changed a thing. The only thing that's going to change racism is Nappy, blonde hair. And to one person individually, one of my favorite people on the planet. Happy birthday, Mr. Cash. Belated birthday. Thank you for all you've done and all that you might do in the future. I read his book, Steve Turner Cash. It's an audio book, actually. And there was a, an occasion where he brought his uh, Jamaican housekeeper to his father's house. Johnny Cash brought his Jamaican uh, housekeeper to his father's house as part of just his band of married people, his wife, his kids, everything. And his father turned to him as they were walking in the house, turned to Johnny and said, get that nigger out of my house. And you know what Johnny did? Old Johnny never talked to him again. 
So, thanks, Johnny. Happy belated birthday. Don't catch you slipping up. Look what I'm whipping up. This is America. Don't catch you slipping up. Don't catch you slipping up. Look what I'm whipping up. This is America. Don't catch you slipping up.